So before going to start uh, my topic, let me introduce myself. Uh, as Shriya told that I am Umar Sadr. I did my MBA in 2013 from Sohn and later on in 2016, I did my PhD uh, under the supervision of Dr. Gazeer. At that time, my focus was innovation. And when I came back to Pakistan, I started serving government of Pakistan and public sector university and government institution. And I'm closely attached with the ecosystem, entrepreneurial ecosystem of Pakistan. I, I became the mentor at many incubation centers, like entrepreneurship incubation centers in Pakistan. And I did a project for higher education commission Pakistan in the incubation center. And during that time, we found that despite the heavy investment of time, mentorship, financial resources, and other resources, we are not getting as expected results as well we were expecting. So we revisit our policies and everything, and we thought that there is some fundamental uh, uh, mismatch between our policies and on ground practices. Luckily, we came up with the concept of effectual entrepreneurship coined by the uh, Saraswati, and she gave this concept of effectual entrepreneurship, and we started implementing this rule on in Pakistan, and the, suddenly the results start becoming positive. I must say it's not as per expected but we are expecting, but still the signs are very positive and we are hoping that it will change the landscape of ecosystem, entrepreneurial ecosystem in Pakistan. So when AIT announced this graduate club and they started al Task series, I found this an opportunity to share what we have learned in four to five years in Pakistan regarding the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And uh, thanks to AIT, that uh, today we are sharing this. But before starting, I would like to alert all of you that whatever you have studied in your undergraduate or graduate level in the business school, that traditional wisdom of entrepreneurship, this presentation is going to shock you. At first, you might say what Dr. Umar is saying. It's totally opposite what we have already learned in the uh, business school. But at the end of this, session, I am very much confident that when you will correlate these concepts with the industrial practices, you will say, okay, this concept is not new. It's in practice from last two, even last two centuries. And it's a very much practical approach. And uh, yeah, it's a bit different and opposite, somehow opposite to what you have learned as a traditional wisdom of entrepreneurship, which we call causal method. So let me start with this. Suppose, in 2018, you started your business, you have got an idea, a very comprehensive idea in which it has a very feasible market share. You did the market analysis, you know that there are market exists for this idea, and you are very much positive. And the next thing, what will you start doing? And the next thing you will start doing is start writing the business plan writing your mission statement, thought analysis, timeline, each and everything you will start. And you make a strategic plan for next 10 to 15 years. I'm talking about 2018. So you are planning for two year 28 or 29 or year 2030. And all the sudden in year 2020, COVID virus comes up. I can bet no one can have predicted that this is going to happen in 2020. Can anyone predicted it before? Can anyone claim here that he predicted this COVID virus in 2018? No, no. So what about all your planning which you did for the next 20 years in 2018? They all are in main. They are vanished. So we can say that you cannot predict your future. You cannot predict your future. If you cannot predict your future, how you are going to control your future? I repeat, 
if you cannot predict your future, the COVID example is with us, how you are going to control it. So if you cannot predict and control, so what about all the business planning you have done? And that's the reason majority of the startups in developing countries like Pakistan, Thailand, Malaysia, Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, they fail. The failure rate of startups in these developing countries or under developing countries is quite higher, even it's up to 98% in some cases. So why they fail? There are many fundamental questions about this, and the answer of this is the effectual entrepreneurship. So we coming back to the slide. So you have like a business plan and you have like the marketing plan, financial plan, competitors, team management, such as planning, everything you have done. So the next step to start a business to get the financing. And the major challenge in our country is startups fails to get the proper funding for their startup. And even if they get the funding from the angel investors or whatever financing sources is this, they don't come up with this expected returns and ultimately they end up within two to three years as a failure. So if even if you are lucky enough to raise a lot of money and you start and build and growing and something happens like COVID-19, you again get a fail. So what to do in that condition? And you go for IPO, you or you go for sell out to your business and you start an other venture. So is it the solution? No. Because what you are trying to do is you are trying to shift the world. I remember when first time I presented my model, research model to Dr. Prazeer, my research supervisor during my PhD, he said, listen, Umar, don't try to shift the world with your thesis. Just find a simple problem and come up with a very innovative solution. That will be enough your PhD and you will have a very long career so you can shift the world later on but at this time take a limited calculated risk because you have limited time and limited resources and his advice worked i completed alhamdulillah my phd within my given time so this is the same advice i give to all startups in pakistan and sometimes online sessions with other countries developing countries like Iman. so i give them this advice that don't try to predict too much don't focus for too much future, just focus what you have. And the answer is lies of all these questions is in effectual theory. Okay, so how many of you want to be an entrepreneur? Shriya, can you please unmute uh, participants? You can raise your hands. Okay, Abdal Jimmy said he, he wants. Who else? Iram Sabha, Jihan Shokar. Okay, so they all want to become an entrepreneur. But as I know, three of you, uh, you are not an entrepreneur right now. You are doing your regular job. So when I ask my students or my colleagues that why don't you want to become an why you want to become an entrepreneur, but what the thing which are killing you? So sometimes they say the lack of business idea, they said we are too much busy with our family time, with job, so we don't have the time for the entrepreneurship. Sometimes they say that we don't have the resources, sometimes lack of experiences, high risk, and for the female entrepreneurship, that is the family support. Even after getting married, if I want to invest too much for an entrepreneurial venture, I have to think about my family as well. So there are many reasons which people may be. Uh, someone wants to speak, I think. Okay. If, is there any question? You can raise the question in between. Uh, so I want to be, uh, make it more interactive and two-way communication rather than just one-way communication and you wait till the end. You can start discussing in between the presentation. Uh, and this is a basically eight-week course which we offer 
and I'm trying to uh, sum up it in within 40 minutes because she is very strict. She said not even a single minute after 40 minutes. So you may have many questions, so you can discuss in between. Okay, so these are the reasons people want to become entrepreneurs, but because of the these constraints, point the constraints is not, not limited to these six to seven reasons. If there are a lot of reasons, but these six to seven reasons are very common answers, which I usually get from my students or participants and my colleagues even. So the one thing that they said it's high, highly risky to become an entrepreneur in the environment in of Pakistan. And sometimes they said we don't have the money. Sometimes they have lack of support from their family. So these are a lot. There are a lot of reasons. So my, I always give them an advice that instead of going for the casual logic, in which you try to predict and control the future, go for effectual logic. It means. You don't need to control the future. Let the future control you. Let ride the tide of the future. Be adoptive. So, question is, how do you control a future you, if you cannot predict it? Answer lies with the, this statement that work what you already have. Don't look for the resources from the outside. If you don't have don't go the financing from the bank. Don't go for the angel investment. Don't go for the family sport. Start whatever you have in your hand. Don't wait for the finances to come. And control the future and control the environment. Come to the co-create the future. Make your team. Make your own stakeholders. And if you look at these the case studies of transparency internationally, eBay, Starbucks, Lemon Bank. They, if you study their case studies, I have their case studies, uh, we usually share with our students. So if you look and read them carefully, then you will say that, yeah, what have they have done is totally opposite what we have studied in our business school. They never waited for the resources to come. They never waited the right time to come. They never waited, they never took a very high risk. They all started with a very small investment, like a snowball, and keep rolling it until it become a giant. And when it becomes a giant, then you can control the future or you can predict the future. But at the startup stage, at the very early stage, I again repeat that look at the case studies of these. Uh, Khan Academy, a uh, very good example from I think Bangladesh. He started from a very small YouTube channel and it's now uh, uh, earning millions of dollars in a year. Uh, and same is to the eBay. And then uh, we have a Grammar Bank from again from Bangladesh. Then we have the example of, from Japan about the paper company, nine dragon paper company. So we will discuss these examples in upcoming slides as well. And we have the case studies if you want. Uh, I can share with you, and besides these, we have uh, many more local companies that uh, case studies with us. So, if you cannot control the uh, or predict the future, start to co create the future. Co create means find the right partner for you and start with whatever you have in your hand. Don't wait for the resources to come, don't wait for the right people to come, don't wait to the right time just start whatever you have in your hand so this is called the effectual so if you keep prediction of a future on one hand and control of the future as a separate thing in other hand there are four strategies which are uh, coming uh, in the field of uh, entrepreneurship the first ones are the adoptive which is a very good study for very single or two percent a very small scale organization so they adopt the changes whatever is coming and those who can predict very future future but they don't have the control they go for the causal method and then the companies comes up with the, have the very high future prediction and very high resources they become the visionary 
but if you study all those companies they started from the acceptable yes at the later stages when they became a giant industry giant they have the major big market share is they become the visionary but if you study them carefully they all started from the adoptive or effectual because they know that they cannot change the future they knew at that time but now they are in a position to control the future even right now yes shriya uh, do you have question you have raised the hand yes we have one question from mr officer zamil i need to know i have great idea in mind but do not feel confident enough to start what do you do in such case yes so coming back uh, to this this is uh, what usually people say they don't feel confident because they don't have the confidence upon your idea idea they don't have confidence upon their expertise they don't have in a resources or they think that the risk is high that's the reason someone is not feeling the for for confident because he is facing the skill so don't try to become an entrepreneur over the night don't try to become a successful over the night it's a snowball you start with the very small setup if you remember and those uh, who were in aig during 2011 till 2016 me and my wife we started a halal food counter in nephew cafe anyone remembers that yes so that was uh, my first entrepreneurial venture and then uh, i have the series and uh, two or three more in entrepreneurial ventures and they all started with very small amount very small amount and uh, at that time i remember that cafe started with 80000 baht and it keep rolling and when we uh, ended up when we sell it to the cambodian family the price was around 200000 baht when we sell it so you always start with the very small if you are not feeling confident so take the limited risk whatever you have in your hand with a calculated risk you small start with it if it's working fine then go with it if it's not then you are not going to compromise anything you are not your opportunity cost will be very minimal but if you invest too heavily of your time effort and financing like what conventional uh, entrepreneurial wisdom says your opportunity cost will be too high the risk will be too high and that's what stopping you start with the very small chidya is there any other question yes there is one comment from mr uh, jeevan majumdar referring to the example of covid 19 how can someone predict the future okay that is coming in the next slide that how uh that the remain reason we are saying that traditional wisdom is not working anymore in which you forecast for the next 5 to 10 years the world is so much dynamic it's changing so rapidly that there are many things beyond your control even you can't imagine them so don't try to control and predict just ride with the tide and sometimes and there is very famous thing that uh, i'm forgetting the author may i give it more recall the name that sometimes world needs crisis so every crisis brings more opportunities that what effectual entrepreneurs do they know that they cannot predict the future the prediction level is very low Sorry, I can't hear you properly. Can someone please repeat the question? Doctor Omar, I think you can continue. That was just a 
Great. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get the question. Can someone please repeat the question? Abzal? Yes, the question of uh, Mr. Jeevan or someone else? No, the, uh, there was uh, some uh, bites which I didn't get. No, this. It's just a background noise, I think. Okay, so uh, you can mute them if there is a no uh, question. Uh, so if someone has questions, they can raise their hand and you can unmute them. Uh, that's how we can control the mic. So, I, uh, how COVID is, uh, uh, we can handle the COVID in this situation. That's coming in the last slide. Uh, that how world is responding that. Okay, so the first question before starting, and the question which came up that I am not feeling confident to start a business, don't look at the market. Don't look outside your boundaries. Look what you have, who I am, what I, my, I know, and who I know. This is the question. And so I was sharing the idea, and if you remember that uh, my me and my family started uh, Halal food cafe, counter in uh, SU cafe. That was a triggering option of the event arranged by the student union. At that time, I don't know if, they, if it continues or not. The uh, student union was uh, every semester they were about to arrange a uh, food festival. And for consecutive two semesters, Pakistani Student Association got the first prize. And people came to us and they said, okay, why not you start selling your food? And my, me and my wife got the idea. Okay, any community within a, uh, from Pakistani community, we can start it. And the initial idea is that the families or Pakistani student families, we will ask them to cook the food and we will sell that food at the counter. So I knew that we are good in cooking. We have the families who can cook us. So I know the whom should I contact, and I had the money in which uh, I can uh, ask. So I had the saving of eighty thousand, and I knew that if I invest this and this amount go in a vein, and I place a lot of eighty thousand mark, it's not going to suffer my family or my lifestyle because this is the saving or additional money I have. So I calculated my affordable loss how much I can afford. I'm not stretching beyond my limit. So I started discussing with the families, Pakistani families and shared with this idea, but unfortunately they were not willing to participate. They said, we don't have the time to cope. We cannot make on the commercial basis. We cannot make on the regular basis. And I met a Cambodian family and they said, okay, we are in a business of uh, food and we know all the supply chains and kitchen operations and you have the recipe. So we combined together and we joined, started as a joint venture. So we started interacting with the people and we make our own stakeholder team. And from there we got a new means of idea. And we started thinking instead of I, we started thinking we, what capabilities they have and what capabilities I have in my mind hand. So now the, from the single person, we have started making the team and now at the initial level, I had 80,000 baht to invest. They came up with 1 lakh and 20,000 baht and the overall capital becomes 200,000 baht. So affordable loss increased and Again, we interacted with the people. We make a target that how much we will sell and starting the cycle of content and we approached to the new market and the new firm. We created a new venture. On other hand, what traditional wisdom said, they asked us to find the new market and the new firm at the start and then go for the resources and then set the goals which is failing because new market, new firm, are you in a position to change them? Are you 
uh, in a position to question them. Kiria, is there any question? There's a question from Iram Sapa. Through yeah. stakeholder commitment, kindly again explain with example. But we can do this later on uh, with the discussion session also. If you want to continue, that's fine. Yeah, oh, oh, we will have a, a, a lot of examples uh, from uh, Iram Sabha, she is from uh, in Pakistan. We have a lot of examples from different various countries. So this example will come again when we will dis uh, discuss the effectual entrepreneurship in detail, the principles of effectual. So right now, I'm just trying to explain you the two avenues. Either you can go the forward in which you analyze the market, you set your goals and you start collecting resources to achieve those goals and then you make your operations. And the other way around is you don't look for the uh, market, you look for yourself, what you have. Like one of very famous poet of Iqbal said in Pakistan, he said, if you, if you want to know the world, know yourself first. If you don't know yourself first, you cannot know the world. So looking outside um, before, outside the world, you start uh, looking from this, and this concept is uh, adopted from the G2000, uh, in 2005, she gave this idea, and which was refined by the Saraswati in 2008. So this idea is relatively new. So now the, to view the things is totally different. From narrow to broader, other than broader to narrow. So this is what you have learned in, in the traditional uh, wisdom of the entrepreneurship that you start analyzing the market first. No, it says this is opposite. You need to know yourself first and then you make your own stakeholder team. So the first concept is bird in hand principle. Start with who you are, what you know, and whom you know. Start looking your own capabilities, your own knowledge, your own expertise. If you try to start a business of a food restaurant, but you don't know how to cook, or you are not a food lover, there is a high pro probability that you will fail to run this business. If you are in a fashion industry and you are not following the fashion trends, or you are on a software engineering uh, firm and you don't follow the technology, there is a very high risk that you will fail. So always start a business in which you have the interest, you have the skills, you know the people of that industry, and you have some resources in your hand. But on traditional wisdom, they said, you set the free goals and operations, and then you will start collecting the resources. No, it's other way around. You don't set your goals first. You first look at the things which is under your control. You are ready to lose them. Like if you have a sending, you can lose them. Or you have the resources, you can lose them. So you look at them. You don't set your goals and start collecting resources. This will lead and waste your time. The second concept is affordable loss principle which I have already explained. Uh, another example is that I have invested in stock market of Pakistan, which is a very volatile stock market. Uh, so again, you can't predict what will be the next economic condition of Pakistan or any other things. Now, uh, everything is doomed. Uh, so I invested almost 250 US dollar, 2,500 USD dollar. And again, that was from the, my savings. And I knew that if I drop each and every single penny of this 2,500 USD, still my family and my lifestyle will not suffer because I have a regular income from my salary as well. So I invested that and keep rolling it. And after one month, at the end of the month, my transaction month means that is the July of, or 15th of each month, I take out the profit from that amount and bring it this money again to, to like uh, 50, uh, 250,000 US dollars. So I keep circulating this and within two years, Alhamdulillah, I recovered all the investment which I made in stock market. 
out of stock market and my same amount is still rolling in the stock market. That's how I recovered. And I knew my this is my affordable loss. So I'm not looking at the expected return rate of in my return on investment, but traditional wisdom of entrepreneurship says that you calculate net present value, rate of return, rate of return, you calculate for uh, the sensitivity uh, analysis, you do all these things, pay back period, and then you start your financial planning. Forget about these things. Don't consider even profit or don't target yourself from the profit. What you do when you set your goals for the return, your focus changes from the business towards the profit. Initial, in, initial ages, forget about the profit. You start with the point of point that you are assuming that this business will fail. And if it fails, the loss will be bearable for me. Don't look at the point of the profit, which traditional wisdom is saying. Forget about it. You have a very long life to earn the profit. Okay, so if you keep focusing on the return on investment, by any means, you will losing your focus. Don't lose your focus. At right time, just focus on your business. Forget about the profitability. The only issue, if you know that you are, if you lose this amount of time, it will not suffer you. You will be confident. The question, uh, the one person who raised this question that I'm not feeling confident, ask him what he is agree to lose. Ask yourself first this, what you want to lose? It can be your time, it can be your effort, it can be your money. So don't, okay. Crazy quilt principle, how many of you know the crazy quilt? It's very common in uh, South Asian countries. If friends from Thai, do you know, or Philippines, do you know what is crazy quilt? Do you have any response in chat box? Okay, it's a quilt. Of course, that name mentioned it's a quilt. But it's made of different pieces of different cloths and colors and in different shapes. So what the women of South Asia do, they take all those pieces of the cloth and stitch them together and make a quilt. So if you look at the single piece of that cloth, which is apparently useless, but when you collect them and stitch them together, they become a very beautiful quilt. So I will try to share the picture of uh, the quilt quilt uh, at the end of the slide. So this is another principle which says, build your network of select, self-selected stakeholders. For example, Today we are sharing this idea with all of you and I know half of you but I don't know the rest of that for example Sir Gibran is here I don't know him but I hoping I'm hoping that at the end of this session we will be knowing each other so what I am doing I'm creating a network at right and this time I'm using the AIT network to connect my colleagues and sharing these things. Maybe at the end of this presentation or session, we will come up with a unique idea for future research, for our business, for our training sessions or something like that. Anything can come up. So I will give you an example of Brahman Bank as well, how Brahman Bank started, how I transformed from an NGO to a bank. And that uh, of Dr. Yunus, we will discuss. That is a perfect example of crazy quilt as well. So, you, when you start your idea with the business, other people around you, your friends, your family, other businessmen in the same market, there will be a point that maybe your idea will change up. You will find the new means. Your entire business plan got changed. And what traditional wisdom is saying that don't share your business idea with anyone. Otherwise, people will show up 
opportunistic behavior. It's wrong. If you want to be in future, you have to co-create. Make your competitors your partners. Make your supply, select your supply partners. Make your business partners. Make your customers your partners. So co-create. Bring up things from the different angles and make them. I know a person in Pakistan who buys a used tire and convert them into many useful things like uh, sitting couch, table, uh, hangers, and uh, even swings for the kids. He's making using by utilizing the old tire and he's using the skill. And he is a full time professor in a university. And this is a part time job and part time business. And last time he was saying that uh, he earned almost half of his salary, half of his family income from these uh, operations. So, what he is trying, he is mixing up the unuseless things together. And with the help of his students, he is telling those times, karmic uh, things. So, you don't need to do any competitive analysis. Don't try and focus too much on your competitors. Instead of competing them with them, try to co-create with them. Make them make your partner. So instead of fighting with them, and this is my favorite most principle, lemonade principle. If life serves you a lemon, make a lemonade. This is my favorite most uh, principle of this equation. That, and as earlier I said, sometimes the world needs crisis. So take, consider every surprise or crisis as an opportunity. Don't avoid them. Try to cash each crisis and surprises and try to make a business out of it. Many beer makers companies right now are making sanitizers. I know many sorry, restaurant businesses who have the home delivery services in Lahore or in Pakistan are now delivering medicines, face masks, sanitizer, and grocery items at the doorstep of the people. They just sanitize those products in, in front of you and leave those type uh, grocery items at your doorstep. Fully uh, sanitized products you receive at your doorstep. And previously they were running their restaurant businesses, but they had the delivery network. But now what they have converted into, into an other online grocery business. So many, many of them are doing this. So that's how Everyone tries to become used with principle. I was uh, discussing with my rector, uh, that is the uh, president of my university, that within 10 to 15 days, we switched from the traditional teaching to the online teaching methodology. And we would have never done in the next five to six years, but thanks to our COVID, we have adopted the technology. Now all the practices in our universities are now paperless and zero paperless because no one is going to office. Everyone is working from home. Everything is on the emails and uh, videos. So paperless. So this wouldn't have been happened if we have faced the COVID-19. And I think same is the case with many other education institutes. Now online teaching, telemedicine, each and every hospital has now their own telemedicine center which wouldn't have been possible in next five, 10 years, but thanks to COVID-19. And even today we are sitting and I'm looking at Hazal Jamil after four and a half year of meeting Dr. Navid and Shiria online. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, of course, because of this COVID-19, they provided an opportunity to interact with each other. It won't be possible because we all were very much busy in our daily life. But now we are together again, thanks to this COVID. So lemonade principle says, don't avoid the challenges. Don't avoid the surprises. Don't avoid the crisis. What traditional wisdom says, avoid the crisis, plan for them, that if it happens, we will do this, and how can we avoid the risk? 
No, this principle says if at most that you will face challenges. So embrace them. Don't get embarrassed from them. Embrace them. Hug them. Come and from uh, and say them, okay, let's come up and we will find an opportunity. Many businesses have switched, uh, switched from the traditional model to the new model. Okay. Pilot in the plane principle. This is again a very uh, interesting. I will share some examples. Don't wait for the future. Don't wait for the people to do something for you. Don't wait for them. If you want to do social marketing, don't ask Ashish. Don't wait for his uh, advice. Am I right, Ashish? Is he here? Oh, he has left. Okay. So don't wait for the people to that they will come up and solve your problem. Go and do it by yourself. You are pilot of your own plan. So try to control each and everything. And this is very much related to the idea of bird in hand principle. If you know your business, you have the skills and expertise of your business. No one can cheat you. You don't need to look for the other people to come. If you don't have those skills, make them part of your team using the crazy point principle. So, okay, ask them to come and join us, not, not as a consultant, but as a partner. One of my friends, uh, she started a business of education and uh, technological ed tech business. Uh, uh, she's a professor and she has very limited expertise in technology. So initially she hired one or two software guys from her university and the, they worked for almost five to six months and the, the result was zero. Because at the end of the month, those guys were used to collect their salary and go. They don't care about the goals. They don't care about the business. But she did. She hired an other person as a partner. Instead of two software engineers, she got only one software engineer, but as a partner. And things started working because now that person has the stake in her business. She, his stake is not limited to his or her salary. Now he is, his future depends upon the growth of that future. So be pilot of your, your own uh, business. Don't wait for people to come up and solve your problem. So these are the companies and case studies uh, which we have and companies on the left side that is Amazon, Google, Apple, Disney, take a Honda even. So you know we are well known of these companies. Have you noticed one thing about these companies? Can anyone share? What's common among these you know, companies? Dr. Omar, we'll have to conclude your speech in five minutes so we can have more uh, time for the discussions. You can go on. Okay, so uh, I'm going to sum up. The thing is, uh, these all companies started from a single room. And even Akua's foundation started from a tree, a single tree under the tree. This first uh, from the Indian company that started from a small village. The Facebook started from a student dormitory. These all businesses started from the garage. They didn't look for the very big structure. Though these companies are very big in right, right now, but they all started with the very limited knowledge. And the owner, especially the owner of the Honda, they knew what they want to do and they had the skill of these things. They had the interest to do these things. So next is affordable loss principle. This is the uh, case from the Nine Dragon Paper Company from the China. Uh, she, she started from the 5,000 uh, US dollar and the last year, uh, the profit, net profit after taxes was around 3.7 million dollar. So the company started from the 5,000, but she started saying the recycling business of the papers and initially she went out and asked for the uh, 
uh, uh, and uh, Dr. Pesha is not here. I was expecting him and I knew that he was going to ask a question about the uh, social entrepreneurship. So the example is Muhammad Yunus Government Bank. Uh, again, this principle is also related with the principle principle and lemonade principle. He was, uh, he had an idea of microfinancing and he wanted to develop a bank. And uh, he had an NGO that was not a proper bank, but an NGO in which he was doing a microfinancing of 25 to $30 per family. And the return rate was above 90%. And that was the guarantee free. So one night in seminar, he was arguing with Mohit that uh, this should be a bank rather than an NGO. And uh, suddenly, a military coup started in uh, Bangladesh. And they were stuck in a hotel in the same seminar room for more than 24 hours. And during that 24 hours, he keeps uh, talking with Mohit about this. And the, uh, the journal who became the dictator of, of Bangladesh, then the next week he appointed Mohit as his advisor. And because Dr. Muhammad Yunus has already convinced him that Lemon Bank should be a bank rather than an NGO, Mohit was already convinced, and uh, that was a regime of military. Then the, the things become uh, easy to move the files. And so, with the one single signature, uh, the Diamond Bank was uh, uh, launched, and he got the Nobel Prize uh, for the in this microfinance and bring glory to his nation. So that's how the link with the people that he crazy quilt and then. The lemonade, basically, if you look at that time, apparently stucking up in a hotel for more than 24 hours when multi-queue is going on, is a surprise and this is a bit for uh, that people who were stuck, but later on that same opportunity paid him very well. Same is uh, uh, Big Belly uh, session, uh, then you can uh, and get the concept of MOSFET. Uh, it's uh, very common in AIT mosquito repellent to those who are playing badminton. They, they, use, they use it a lot. That was developed during the Vietnam, Vietnam World War II because many people were dying from the malaria and they developed this. Uh, and right now, someone asked a question from the uh, COVID-19. Uh, so business has transformed. The beer makers are making hand uh, sanitizers. The 3D printers are now making uh, ventilator the businesses have changed. I know many people who are making the face mask. I know many people who are making right now the sanitizer, the gloves, which were not. So, uh, pilot in the plane principal, Sonia Balba, have you ever heard about her? Her mother died at the age of 58 and she saw her suffering and then she came to know that she has the same genetic problem as well and she will feel the same problem in her 50s. At that time, she was 27. And she shifted her career from the law, she and her, uh, her husband. They shifted from the law business, law to business, oh, sorry, medical business. And she started doing business, oh, sorry, uh, PhD in the research in the field of pharmacy. And she discovered the medicine for the disease. So instead of waiting someone to Create the cure of her disease. She created the cure of her disease. And same is the backpack. Many of you are using this. The idea was generated by the University College students. Uh, they wanted a waterproof backpack which can fit all their necessities along with the power plant, built in power plant. Uh, for someone to come uh, to make this product for them. They made this uh, laptop bag, put it on the kickstarter.com and then uh, started raising the funds and they started making it. So then later on this idea was copied by many manufacturers, but still they are the market leader. So this is my end of discussion. At the end, I, I was a bit fast because Syria said they are going to end. And this is my contact detail. Then I'll uh, continue later on for these examples, case studies, or anything you want to do.